We need to be the party of nationalism. And I'm a Christian, and I say it proudly. We should be Christian nationalists. Mm -hmm. Over the past couple of years, we've seen the Republican Party, both subtly and not so subtly, embrace openly the idea of Christian nationalism. But it's important to note that while they claim to use Christian values to justify their extremist policies, almost none of what they stand for is actually based on the teachings of the impoverished Jewish guy from Palestine who was killed by the Romans in 1 BC and who preached to care for the poor, the sick, and immigrants, to not pray in public, and to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, the guy these people claim to believe in. Take Marjorie Taylor Greene, the QAnon curious Georgia congresswoman who yesterday, on the anniversary of 9-11, tweeted, and I quote, states should consider seceding if the president doesn't change his policies at the southern border. Please. Nobody tell her Jesus was a refugee. She might try to deport him. Joining me now is Frank Schaefer, film director, screenwriter, and author of the book, Why I Am an Atheist Who Believes in God. Frank, uh, thank you so much for being here. I will just allow you to comment, if you will, if you would, on a member of Congress saying that we should secede, the, I guess maybe not her state because it's kind of a blue state now, uh, we should secede from the union if immigrants are not mistreated. That's not real biblical, you know, I don't think. Yeah, Joy, Joy, let me say the introduction you gave with your trip to Ghana and the slave trade is really, sadly, the perfect background to address this subject. This week in Washington, there's a group meeting of Christian leaders, pray, vote, stand, at which Marjorie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump, DeSantis and the rest of the crew will all speak. And this same group is very much allied these days with Viktor Orban of Hungary, who has established a kind of Christian nationalism, white nationalism there. You know, when Eichmann, who was the designer of the Holocaust with Himmler, came to Hungary with only 20 officers after Hungary fell to the Germans, he said, you know, we don't need to bring more troops here because the Roman Catholic Church is already doing such a good job rounding the Jews up, suppressing them. They will do our work for us. And indeed, they did. That ties in so beautifully with that amazing oratory that you just gave us on your trip to Ghana. Thank you. Where there are churches sitting in a building with prisoners, slaves, enslaved people languishing beneath. This is not new. What your listeners, what your viewers have to understand is that white nationalism and Christian nationalism have marched hand in hand since the 14th century into our world, and they have never stopped. There are interagnums where there are pauses, but the American Christian nationalists, the white nationalists, this amalgam of people who are now trying to stop the teaching of black history, roll back rights for women and gay folks, who are trying to put us back in a position of ignoring our own racist history as if we can blot it out are very much in line with the history of Christian conquest. They are not the anomaly. They are the norm. What is the anomaly is the wonderful breathing space we were given by the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. What is the anomaly is this idea that somehow equality and freedom should coexist. You know, we're the only country on earth right now that has even attempted a truly multiracial, multicultural society built on our broken history of slavery that we have tried to move beyond. And now these people, the Republican Party, this week, pray, vote, stand. If you go online and look at their website, it reads like a primer on how to strip American democracy away and replace it with Christian nationalism, a theocracy that makes us far more akin to the church in Ghana built above the slave quarters than to anything we would recognize. Indeed, much more akin to the women's fight in Iran against their government, where they are raped in police stations. Let's just remember something. Viktor Orban, who is the friend of all these people, a big fan of Tucker Carlson, who quotes him all the time and invites him over, has started to move his country towards an authoritarian model that Fox News, Tucker Carlson, the Republican Party, Donald Trump, all these others want to emulate here in America. And so sadly and genuinely, it breaks my heart. When I was listening to you talking about your trip to Ghana, this is not past history. This is now. And it is going to repeat here in the United States unless we crush, and I choose that word advisedly, 
this snake in our midst of a combination of racism, white supremacy, which you pointed out so well in the segment before our little talk here, and the rise of Christian nationalism. This is all one and the same reactionary movement. These people are holding hands across the distance of history, which, as you rightly point out, is not so long ago, with the slave trade. They are rolling us back into an era where what was unthinkable even 20 or 30 years ago in America is now becoming thinkable. It is no, it is no coincidence that there's also a rise of anti-Semitism, that in Elon Musk, for instance, today, we have echoes of Henry Ford in 1920 who started an anti-Semitic newspaper yeah. railing against Jews. These yeah. things all go together. White nationalism, Christian nationalism, anti-Semitism. This is the world the Republican Trump cult has brought us. And every American who loves their country mm. must stand up and fight these people with tooth and nail. It, yeah. is, it is a life and death struggle. This is not a moment for faltering. Amen. You can get an amen, uh, Frank Schaefer. Uh, it is always a pleasure. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, everything that you said.